to join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. Now, I want you to see, it says here in this verse, because I have believed. To believe means to see in a certain way, to think in a certain way. To set my mind in a certain direction. So when I'm believing something, I refuse to, uh, to alter what my mind is holding on to. That's what it means that you believe something. Your mind holds on to something and you refuse to adjust. You refuse to move it. I have believed. One of the things that I believe is that my life will count for something significant on the planet. I have believed. It's a belief. Oh, that my marriage will work and my marriage will, will last until Jesus comes. I have believed it. You see, when, when, we were, when we were being prepared for marriage, they taught us that divorce is not an option. So for me, divorce is not an option. Amen. It's not an option. I have believed it. Now, now because of what I believe, because I believe that it's not an option, Every issue that have arisen in the last 22 years of my being married, we have resolved it. Because for me, there's no other option. The matter must be resolved. Amen. You know, I teach, I teach couples when, when I prepare people for premarital, uh, premarital classes and premarital counseling. When you come into this thing, you close the door and throw the key away. You close the door, lock it, and throw the key away. You are not opening this door again. Amen. And when you understand this thing that there is no option to open this door, you solve the problems. And I, I give this little illustration. Maybe it's going to help somebody this morning. If I locked you in this room and I left the door open, or you know that the door is open, and a little fire starts in that corner, what would you do? Of course you bail out. You run to that door and you open it and you run out. Because you know that the door is open. But if the door is locked and a fire starts, what do you do? You find a way to quench the fire. Oh, yes. You find a way to fight the fire. You don't run out. Because a lot of people, the reason why they run out is because they have the option to run out. They left the door open. But if you lock that door and lock it permanently, you will quench that fire. Amen. Amen. And that's how it is in marriage. So, so when you see people who have been married 20 years, 30 years, it's not because they've not had problems. You know, I find it ridiculous when people are married for, for six months and one year and four years and you say, I want out. What nonsense. How do you want out? No, you resolve the issue. You fix the fire. You get it off. The only reason why is because Satan told you that it's an option. Keep the door open. <laughs> I remember a couple that came for premarital counsel and I said this thing from the beginning. That for me, marriage is forever. It's not, it's not, it's not, we don't enter it, you know, temporarily to check whether it will work or not. No, marriage is forever according to scriptures. Amen. Amen. According to the Bible is what? It's forever. It's till death do us part. And I said to them, you got to make up your mind to lock that door and throw away the key. <laughs> so we started the classes. So every time we, you know, the classes are about 18, 18, 18 sessions. Every time we, we come to, for the class, I will ask the question. And I remember once she said, no, pastor, you know, I, I left the door ajar. I said, no, I don't believe in leaving the door ajar. We got to, we got to make sure that this thing succeeds. So at some point, she said to me, you know, Pastor, okay, I've locked the door, but the key is in my handbag. <laughs> I have locked the door, but the key is in my handbag. I said, no, the key must be thrown away. By the time we got to, I think, session eight or nine, one day she came and said, Pastor, I've thrown the key away. I said, now you are here. Now this thing will work. Now you've made up your mind that it will work, it will work. Hallelujah. Now that you've made up your mind that you will see the goodness of God in this marriage, it will work. That's what it is. 
People, people open the door because you lose hearts. You lose hearts. Nobody told you that marriage is a bed of roses. Anybody who's been married for any length of time, except you're married to an angel, even if you're married to an angel, when it comes to marriage. Now, now, now let, let, me, let, me, let me help somebody here. If husband and wife believe this scripture in Psalm 27 verse 13, that we will see the goodness of God in our marriage. And they are both committed to see the goodness of God in their marriage. The marriage will work. The problem is when one party or both parties don't believe it. And when they don't believe it, it will manifest in, in different things. It will manifest in abuse. Mm. Because how do you, how do you, how do you expect to see the goodness of God when you are abusive to your spouse? No, you don't believe it. You don't believe that you will see the goodness of God. And, and your lack of faith in that fact is manifesting in what? Abuse. And I want to say to somebody, you know, if you are in an abusive relationship, if you're in an abusive marriage, where they are beating you up, where, no man, you have my permission. I'm not asking you to divorce. I'm asking you to leave. There are two different things. I'm asking you to what? Leave. Leave that place. It's, it's not somebody who is alive. <laughs> if, you, if you stay there and they kill you, you won't see the goodness of God. <laughs> it's somebody who is alive that sees the goodness of God. In the land of the living. That's what the Bible says there. Is where? In the land of the living. Not in the land of the dead. You will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So if this scripture is going to work, you need to separate yourself from an abusive situation. And then let's seek help. Because an abusive person can be rehabilitated. Amen. Oh, yes. So I'm not asking you to lock the door and stay there and they are pounding you. And they are pounding you. No, 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 no. That's why you need a pastor. If you are in a place and the door has been locked, but they are pounding you and they are pounding your head, please come and speak to your pastor. He will open the door and let you out. So that at least for now, at least you are in safety. Amen. And then let's rehabilitate that idiot or that beast. Let, because the reason why he's behaving like that or she is behaving like that, because these days it's not only women that abuse, men that abuse women, men, women also abuse men. It's because they don't, have, they don't have a revelation of the goodness of God. You know, I have been teaching it. When you know a God who is kind, you will be kind. And when you know God to be a gentle God, you'll be gentle. When you know God to be gracious, you'll be gracious. So when you see someone who is violent and aggressive and abusive, they need a revelation of the goodness of God. Amen. They haven't seen God. Because when you know God, you will manifest what you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that person hasn't, doesn't know a good God. They have a wrong picture of God. And that's why they are violent. Because they think God is violent. They need to come sit down with the things that I've been teaching for the last almost three years. On the goodness of God. So they can see God. Because when you see God, you are transformed. When you see a kind God and a loving God, you become kind and loving. When you see a generous God, you become generous. So, so when someone is abusive, they, have, they don't know this scripture. All right. So, so don't say that pastor said, lock the door and stay there until they kill you. No, that's not what I said. Amen. Amen. Help me tell your neighbor, that's not what pastor is saying. Uh -huh. So I'm saying, I'm saying, when the man and the woman are committed... To seeing the goodness of God in their lives. In other words, they are committed to learning and knowing God as a good God. Their marriage will work. They will resolve issues and things will work. Amen. All right, let me keep going. Let me keep going. I don't know why I went there. Somebody needed to hear it. Amen. All right. We, we're talking about setting your face as a flint. That's what it means when the psalmist said here, I have believed it. In other words, I have made up my mind I'm going to stay with what I believe. And it doesn't matter what the pressure is. I am going to stay with what I believe. And because I have made up my mind that way, I know that I will not be ashamed. Alright. Let me show you something. Go with me to Luke chapter 9. I want to show you how the master applied that scripture. 
Luke chapter 9. Verse 51. Luke chapter 9 verse 51. Now it came to pass. When the time had come for him to be received up. That he first steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. When the time had come for him to go and pay the price of the sin of humanity. When the time had come, remember that, that the master, listen, the master came for many things. All right? His mission on the earth, God became a man for many things. He came to show the world what the father looked like. He came to show mankind what it looks like to have a deep, intimate relationship with the Father. He came to pay the price of man's sin. He came to deliver man from Satan. He came to rescue the planets and rescue the universe from Satan. So he came to do a number of things. So, so when time came, after three, three and a half years of ministry, of demonstrating the Father, of healing the sick, of raising the dead, of doing the works of God, setting the captives free. When time came for the ultimate sacrifice to be made, the Bible said he set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. Fulfilling that scripture that we read in Isaiah. Because in Isaiah it was prophesied that he would do so. So here he is fulfilling that scripture. You will fulfill the scriptures concerning your life. I say you will fulfill the scriptures concerning your life. Oh, you, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say that again. You will fulfill what has been said concerning you. The key, the key is setting your mind. Setting your mind. Some things have been said concerning you. Listen, listen. Some things have been said concerning you. Salvation has been set concerning you. <laughs> Prosperity has been set concerning you. <laughs> Immortality has been set concerning you. It's all been said. Jesus paid the price and set it concerning you. So the same way that it took the master to set his mind like a flint to fulfill the things that were said concerning him, the same thing of you. So he set his mind to go to Jerusalem because it was said concerning him. And then he sent messengers before his face. As they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him. Because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Oof. So, so please pay attention here. He understood what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem. He understood the beating. He understood the flogging. He understood the punishment that he was going to go through. But he set his mind to go anyway. He set his mind. He made up his mind and his face was set like a flint. He was not going to flinch. He was not going to consider it. It's not an option. He set his mind to go and do what was written concerning him. I'm saying to you, if you are, please hear what I'm about to say. If you are going to fulfill all that Jesus secured for you, if you are going to experience everything that Jesus died to secure for you, you would have to do the same. You got to set up your set, set your mind. You got to make up your mind and lock your mind. Jesus is our pattern. Are you hearing me this morning? Jesus is what? Is our pattern. So his life is a pattern of the journey that you have to go through. So he set his mind, locked his mind. This is the will of God for me. I will fulfill it. Can I say it to you? If you're going to have all of the will of God for your life, you got to set your mind. you got to make up your mind. Lock it in the direction of the will of God. Amen. What I'm saying is very deep. I'm just praying that you will get it. So as the master set his mind and made up his mind, I will not deviate it from this. The same way, if you are going to fulfill the will of God, it is because you made up your mind. If you are going to enjoy everything that, listen, everything that heaven has for you, you've got to set your mind like a flint. 
you got to set your mind what? Like a flint. I make up my mind, I will enjoy prosperity. I've made up my mind, I will have good health in my body. I've made up my mind, my marriage will work. I've made up my mind, oh yes, that I will have much more than enough. I've made up my mind that I will fulfill the reason for my creation. I've made up my mind. It's, it, there is a, a making up of your mind and setting your mind. The Bible said concerning Daniel and his friends, the Bible said Daniel proposed in his heart. There's a, certain, there's a certain proposing, a certain resolution, a certain making up of your mind that is required to manifest the goodness of God. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. There's a certain making up of your mind that is required to manifest the goodness of God. So our master made up his mind. I'm going to Jerusalem. It's not convenient. It's going to be painful. It's, I'm going to be opposed. I'm going to be fought. They, they're going to maltreat me. But I've made up my mind. I'll fulfill the will of God. And I'm saying to you, it's the same thing. You've got to make up your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many people who have abandoned the faith because of opposition and persecution. They didn't make up their mind. But it's required. Hallelujah. It's required. Why will Stephen give his life up for the gospel? He made up his mind. He made up his mind. So when they decided to kill him, he made up his mind, I would rather die than deny Christ. So there is a measure of making up of your mind to manifest the will of God for your life. So when the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, let's go there. Let's go there. You will understand it now. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, if then you were raised with Christ, someone say, I have been raised with Christ. Someone say, I've been raised with Christ. You know, over, the, over when we're dealing with resurrection, life, and power, I explained what that means. You've been raised with Christ. So you have a, a risen spirit, you have a risen mind or a risen soul, and you have a risen body. Somebody say, I've been raised with Christ. Raised. Oh yes, that's what the scripture says. If then you were raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your mind. Do you see that again? Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your mind as a flint. Lock your mind on some things. This is my reality. Let me explain to you why this is important. Please, please hear this. Let me, let me explain it. There are two dimensions. There's a spirit realm and there's a natural realm. There's a spirit dimension that is invisible and there's a natural realm that is visible. We are created in the earth or put in the earth to draw the realities of the invisible realm and manifest it on the earth. Hence, Jesus taught us to pray. He said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are here to bring heaven into the earth. We are here to take that, the reality in the spirit dimension and make it the reality in the physical dimension. So the resources of the spirit, me and you, we are here to manifest it. Now, this is the part that is interesting. I am a spirit. Somebody say I am a spirit. But I live in a body. I have a body. So, as I am... I have access to two dimensions. The spirit realm and the natural realm. And what is the connection from the spirit realm to the natural realm? My soul. My soul is the channel, please hear this, that draw the resources of the spirit to manifest it in the earth. My soul. And my soul is where my mind is. So, the spirit has all the resources, all the money, all the healing, all the well-being. Immortality is in the spirit. But if it's going to manifest in the natural, my mind has to agree with the spirit and set and lock in in the spirit. So that, think of your mind as a pipe. So that the resources of the spirit can flow through that pipe and manifest in the natural. Hallelujah. So, heaven is full of joy. My life on the earth is supposed to have joy. But for joy to flow from heaven into the earth, my mind must be set on things above. 
So my mind must be set on joy. And when my mind is set on joy, joy starts flowing through my mind and fuels my emotion. And then my world is filled with joy because I am joyful. Are you here? So, so is it possible that someone who is joyful dis, you know, di dispenses sadness? No. If someone is joyful, what do they dispense? They dispense joy. Everybody around them gets the joy that they, they are carrying. Hallelujah. Are you here? So, so, so my mind must be set on the things above, the joy above. When my mind is set there, I, I, con I carry joy. I become a conduit for joy and I fill my world with joy. And God wants me and you to channel joy from heaven and fill the earth with joy. Joy is one example. Let me give another example. Abundance and prosperity. There is no lack in the realm of the spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. There's no lack. There's no lack that dimension. So if there is lack in this dimension, it's because my mind is not set. So that abundance begins to flow through my mind and manifest the side. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.